Hello, and welcome to the Pony 80 video series. Join me, Ponytail Bob, on the adventure of creating a Z80-based 8-bit computer from breadboard to printed circuit board. Along the way, we will learn how the Z80 processor works, how to address memory, how to utilize peripherals, and how to expand by adding inputs and outputs. And as a disclaimer, I'm not an electronics engineer, nor do I have any formal education in electronics. I'm just curious, and I love learning new things. So with that, let's get started. This modular design utilizes a 6-slot, 40-pin backplane, seen here, with cards for CPU and clock, memory, PS2 keyboard interface, LCD display, and this thing that tells time. It's powered from a 5-volt power supply and uses about 1 amp. Here you can see the pins for the LED and the on-off switch. This is the CPU and clock module. You can see the Z80 on the left, with a 555 timer to provide the slow clock, and an oscillator to provide the fast clock. This is switchable using a jumper. I also have pins for LEDs for the clock, a reset indicator, a halt indicator, and pins for a reset switch. This is the memory module. It currently has 64K of RAM and 32K of ROM. Since the Z80 can only access 64K of memory at one time, the memory is set up to use 8K of ROM and 56K of RAM. In the future, I'm going to make this memory bank selectable so the ROM will have four banks of 8K each. This will allow for having multiple ROM images that do different things. The ROM chip uses a ZIF socket to allow for easy removal for reprogramming. This is the interrupt module card. This card uses a 1 MHz clock in the Z80 CTC chip to generate an interrupt every millisecond. I use this for delays and other timing routines. Eventually, this card will be upgraded to a true real-time clock with battery backup. I also have space for pins that will allow access to the other three counters or timers on the chip. This is the PS2 keyboard interface card. It uses the Z80 PIO chip to handle the parallel interface to the CPU and logic chips to decode the data coming from the keyboard. Even though the PS2 keyboard was not around in the days of 8-bit computers, I wanted to see if I could interface it with the Z80 using only logic chips. I think it worked well. And finally, we have the LCD display. This display was much simpler to implement than a true video monitor, allowing me to get the computer running more quickly. But during this series, I'm going to attempt to build a true display interface for a monitor. So I hope you'll join me as I start with breadboard and walk you all the way through building the Pony 80. It was a fun project and it definitely has challenged me to dive deeper into electronics and learn more about how computers work at a hardware level. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you'll be aware of the new videos as they come online. I also have a patron account where I'll be releasing the videos in advance and providing more in-depth and behind-the-scenes videos. Check out the description below for the links.